in the introduction of coming of age in Mississippi, Ann Moody, named Essie Mae Moody at birth, lives in rural Mississippi in the 1940s with her mother, Mama, and her younger siblings. Essie learns quickly that white children are treated much differently than black ones. In the rising action, Essie also changes her name to Anne after a mix-up on her birth certificate. She excels in school and gets jobs to earn her own money. Soon, Essie, now Anne, learns about Emmett Till's murder and the work of the NAACP. She despises the people in her small town for letting racist assaults go unchallenged. During the summer, she finds work in New Orleans and learns more about the world, gaining more courage. But soon, another racially motivated murder occurs when the Taplin family's home is burned in Anne's hometown of Centerville. Anne leaves home sooner than planned, stays with her father and stepmother, then enrolls in Natchez College on a basketball scholarship, leaving Centerville behind for good. At college, Anne leads a boycott of the campus dining hall after discovering unsanitary conditions in the kitchen. She transfers to Tougaloo College and joins its chapter of the NAACP, even though she knows her affiliation with the civil rights movement will put her family at risk. In the climax of the memoir, Anne participates in a sit-in at the Jackson, Mississippi Woolworths lunch counter. A white mob attacks her and her fellow protesters. In the falling action, Jackson becomes the South's hotbed of civil rights demonstrations, and Anne is a key grassroots organizer in the movement. She's arrested several times, attends civil rights activist Medgar Evers' funeral, and Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s historic speech in Washington. Anne believes in the movement, but is critical of its shortcomings and thinks young people show more leadership potential than older activists. So it is, Anne moves to the small Mississippi town of Canton to continue her civil rights work. The organization emphasizes black voter registration, but many black Canton residents risk losing their jobs or being shot if they vote. After several violent incidents, including a church bombing in Alabama, Anne takes a brief break from organizing work and reconnects with her family, but soon returns to the movement. In the resolution, Anne joins the Summer Project, traveling to Washington with a group of activists. Members of the Moody family are the central characters in Anne Moody's civil rights movement memoir, Coming of Age in Mississippi. Anne Moody is called Essie, or Essie May, as a child, and by family members as an adult. She changes her name to Anne, or Annie, after discovering a birth certificate misprint when she's a teenager, but it's for the best. She prefers the name Anne to Essie. Anne is an outspoken, brave, and academically talented young woman. She develops into an independent activist and leaves her Mississippi hometown permanently. She grapples with the violent history of racism in the South, the complicity of many black people in their own oppression, and the slow progress of the civil rights movement. Her relationship with her family is tense. Anne feels many of her family members don't see the need for change. Mama begins the book as a vibrant and cheerful young woman, but a lifetime of hard labor, poverty, and prejudice wears her down, and her character arc is one of the book's most tragic. Anne sees how Mama has lost her hopes and dreams and determines to live her own life a different way. Mama discourages Anne's civil rights work, fearing for the family's safety. Adeline is a strong, responsible woman finding work in New Orleans as a young adult. She's more risk-averse and cautious than her sister Anne, criticizing Anne's activism and decision to attend college. Toward the end of the book, Adeline considers getting her own college diploma. Anne gains more respect for Anne's civil rights work, showing Anne's positive influence on Adeline. Raymond, Anne's stepfather and Mama's second husband, struggles to earn economic independence after years of working as a sharecropper. His financial insecurity often makes him angry, and he takes his anger out on his family. Though Raymond sometimes treats Mama well and provides for her, his support is inconsistent, and he often fails Mama when she needs him most. Raymond takes a sexual interest in Anne as she grows older. It's Anne's distrust of Raymond that finally compels her to leave home for good. Daddy, Anne's father, leaves the family when Anne is young, deeply hurting Mama and leaving the family financially insecure. As his children grow older, he occasionally pops back in and tries to be involved in their lives by visiting and buying gifts. Daddy later settles down with his second wife, Emma, and becomes a more stable source of support for Anne. 
food and farming, clothing, and music and spirituals are the key symbols in Anne Moody's powerful memoir, Coming of Age in Mississippi. Food symbolizes self-sufficiency, self-determination, and social status. And the Moody family members feel more confident when they supply their own food. Raymond dreams of being an independent farmer, Anne works to earn money for staples like milk and beans. Food ultimately demonstrates the difference in economic status between the Moody's and their white employers. Farming represents a southern rural agrarian way of life and identity. Mama and Raymond are hooked to the soil. Gardening is one of the few times Anne sees her mother happy. Though farming gives a sense of purpose to her family, Anne notices how little control Mama and Raymond have over their crops, and how they're unable to farm their way out of poverty. Clothing represents transformation, independence, and positive change. Key transitions and moments in Anne's life are often symbolized by a new outfit. For example, her baptism dress demonstrates her membership in a church community and her connection to black churches. Her homecoming gown shows her grown into a respected, confident young woman. The new clothes she buys after a summer in New Orleans show her increased desire for an independent adult life. And her graduation cap and gown demonstrate her hard-won accomplishments. Music represents heritage and pride, and spirituals, or religious songs associated with African-American Christian communities, show the unity, strength, and passion of the civil rights movement. Activists sing in jail, while marching, and on the bus to Washington. The songs We Shall Overcome and Oh Freedom become particularly important to Anne. She hears the strengths and the limitations of the movement expressed in the lyrics. The lyrics to Old Folks at Home and Dixie inspire Centerville's nostalgia for an older version of the South, complete with racism and subordination of black Southerners. These songs show Anne the challenges the movement will face in Mississippi. The struggle of social change, racism is violence, poverty's oppression, and a girl's growth are the key themes in coming of age in Mississippi. Coming of Age in Mississippi is all about the struggle of social change. White Southerners are passionately committed to their segregated lifestyle and will kill to preserve Jim Crow laws. Anne sees the power of white nostalgia when the town sings at the homecoming parade. After the Woolworths sit in, she sees the resistance to change as a sickness for which there may be no cure. The movement doesn't just want to get new laws passed, they want to radically restructure an entire society from the ground up. But black Southerners can be resistant to change. One of the movement's goals is to transform the way black Southerners see themselves, not as second-class citizens, but as Americans worthy of dignity, respect, and rights. Racism as violence is a theme that speaks to assaults, shootings, burnings, even bombings. The terror killings of black Southerners meant to maintain Jim Crow. Law enforcement uses state-sanctioned methods of violence at movement rallies and protests. The specter of physical violence and power, the idea white people can do anything they want to black people and get away with it, is present in countless interracial conversations. Poverty's oppression is represented by the federal government's deliberate creation of a situation where discrimination and poverty can flourish. Black sharecroppers, for instance, depend on their white employers for food and housing, as well as income. If the sharecroppers, or any black people with white employers, register to vote or join a civil rights organization, they risk losing their jobs. When children are forced to live in poverty, Anne discovers, it's harder for them to develop critical thinking skills and for their talent to flourish. A girl's growth is another major theme. Anne's search for her identity and her discovery of the civil rights movement show a woman writing her own life story. Anne's story includes many experiences common to coming-of-age narratives. She embarks on a quest to secure civil rights and freedom for African Americans. 